Nobody's born incredible. People who do incredible things simply took the right steps. This is our journey. This is the hunt for incredible. In this episode, we continue our conversation with Juan Rodriguez. In the previous episode, we talk about how he built his business, became a renowned chef featured on Chopped, and much more. Be sure to circle back around to that episode after this one if you missed it. In this episode, we talk about how he would do it all over again with no money and no connections so you can apply it to your own life. All right, without further ado, here's my continued conversation with Juan Rodriguez. Yeah, that's amazing. As an, as an artist, from my perspective, you have achieved such an incredibly high level of success considering you have the flexibility to travel to Japan if yeah, you want to, you sure. know, be inspired by sake and or mm, sushi and sushi. everything else. I will mm. say you were right when you said it might ruin sushi for you because did, sushi <laughs> has never been the same. The quality of sushi in Japan now is all I think about yeah. when I have there's, sushi anywhere there's else. There's one place in town here, uh, Hatsuyuki. Okay. Uh, it's 20 seats countertop, and it's pretty close to to what we had out there. It's it's really good. Probably one of the best restaurants in Fort Worth. Oh, nice. It's We're going to have great. to check that out. It's over by um, uh, Texas Republic in that, okay. in that strip. Yeah, yeah. Hatsuyuki? Is yeah, that what you said? Hatsuyuki. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah really we're good. 100% going to go there really later. Really good. All right, so now let's dive into the second part of this show, right? Which is if you had to start over, no connections, no money, no ties to um, any loan sharks, how would you go about it? Or maybe you'd find loan sharks. You know, I always said I would travel more. I would just take off and go. If, if I was to stay in culinary, um, I would travel, travel to Europe, w- work at restaurants in Europe if I could, or really just different cities. Um, I, you know, and even at, at this point, knowing what I, I don't know if that would have helped out, but I, I think it would have really opened up, um, my palate a lot faster. And if that was the case, then I'd probably be doing this earlier. I guess not that I'm old or anything. I mean, um, you know, you still have a lot of, um, although I was 27 when I ran Riata. Damn it. I can't go. That is, that is, <laughs> it's hard to go younger than that. Like I was 27 running one of the biggest restaurants in Fort Worth, <laughs> the youngest chef to ever do it. Um, but I, I prop the main thing I always said to myself, I wish I would have traveled for, for work more. Yeah. To broaden more of those, mm-hmm. The areas for ideas to Absolutely. actually come from. Yeah, because my whole, you know, my whole culinary culinary career was always, you know, Texas, Southwest, um, Mexican. You know, I, I should have traveled and, and done like a French restaurant in, you know, New York or San Francisco or you know areas like that. Yeah, that, that'd be the only thing. Yeah. yeah, that's another one of those counterintuitive things we were talking about discovering what you want to do in life instead of looking out at a bunch of different things look in and discover what has you know fueled you or given Mm -hmm. you a spark in your eye during it what's counterintuitive about ideas is those you need to also go out and search right ideas are the inverse where people think like oh i need to search inside my brain for ideas but it's no no, you have to to get out you do you have to go out there's a really good book called where good ideas come from um the author uh evades me right now so i'll have to throw it in the show notes but that book talks about idea generation via content aggregation so you basically just ingest a bunch of different types of things and then your brain will assimilate what that innovative or new and creative idea is. That's why traveling is important to me. And that's why diving into different cultures is important. You just pull, you know, ideas, inspiration from many, many areas. You know, uh, I mean, I think we need that. Um, I don't think the most successful people just thought of it right then and there without, you know, going outside uh, most of them go outside, most of them travel, most of them, you know, do things to, you know, spark their, their brain and, you know, open up their creativity. Right. So you would front load that content aggregation. You'd go out, try a bunch of different cultures and foods mm-hmm. and aggregate that information so that you can assimilate it and integrate it into your craft. W- after that, what would you say is next? You gather all the information and just 
just take the leap and start something, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess money would be an important thing, right? <laughs> um, you know, once I go off and, and find something, inspiration, see if it works first in, in this market, and then uh, go with it, run with it. Okay. So seeing seeing what works in your market first, does that look like maybe you open up your you, you start a kitchen in your garage and you invite yeah. friends over and, and have them tasting the food and then would you validate that you can do it before you go out and raise money? Would you raise money first and then try to No, validate it first and then raise money. Yeah. Um I mean I, my validation was my background. Mm. You know. And I think that kind of helped out a, a little bit at the beginning as well, right? Uh, but it wasn't until we started generating revenue that, you know, we started asking for more money, besides my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> then we went to banks and said, look, this is what we're doing. Um, you know, we're, we're not in the red. We're, we've, we've had good, you know, months. Uh, we ended the year, uh, you know, in a positive way. And, you know, what can you do? He's like, oh, we'll lend you another 15, 20,000. So there, there are a handful of different models um, in the restaurant game. We've touched on supper club, catering, mm -hmm. um, off, off mic. We've talked about food trucks and different sure. things like that. What would you recommend or what would you do as your the next step up, right? So you've tested it against the market. You've created different dishes, created small experiences for other people. You know that you want to scale up. What does that next step look like in terms of what type of model you go for next? I mean, I, I like to keep everything small and intimate. Uh, I mean, the next model for us is going to be a wine bar and tapas, um, small, um, intimate, 40 seat restaurant or bar. Um, that's what works for us, right? It's the experience, right? So supper club, it's 40 seats. Uh, obviously catering or 40 seats, uh, 50, 60, 70 seats, whatever uh, we cap it at that month. Um, so we want to keep that, that close experience. Um, you know, and that was just, we had breakfast, uh, this morning at a place. Um, and it was, it's a big place and they only had two servers and yeah, uh, they, it just wasn't, it just wasn't right. You know? It's like, oh, this, this sucks. Yeah. We want to keep that experience going, you know, and we were lucky to find a, a building that it's going to um, help us uh, help us do that with um, that intimate experience. Yeah, I think that's when when we look for a next venture, you know, is it going to um, overstretch us? Is it are we going to be strained for for help? I always try to make the ne next leap uh, if we have the people for it, you know. So I started hiring for the next project, um, so that way I don't have to worry about hiring people, you know. When we come to that, I we have people who who understand what we do and understand our, our values, and um, you know, and then they're gonna go off and, and open up the next next go around. A lot of people like to. There's people. There's chefs who open up the places and just buy the restaurant get everything ready and then they hire the people but i think we're we're at a different stage after covid where you know we 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 should focus more on the people before we we make those leaps you know i don't know so what what is focusing on the people before making the leaps look like if you were starting going from zero to one i mean we're investing in them I mean, for, for us is finding the good people that, um, uh, that will help us, help us grow, but at the same time, help them grow. You know, mm. um, uh, we're, my, my girls are going to wedding MBA again this year. <laughs> I told Paige, no drinking Paige. It's all <laughs> business, please. <laughs> uh, but investing in, in the employees that we do hire in, in um, you know, obviously you're, you're going to have the ones who, you know, don't understand what you're trying to, you know, put out there. So, you know, out the door, but the ones that do stay, you make sure you, uh, invest in them so they can grow and, you know, help you grow as well. Yeah. So almost creating that environment yeah. where 
Yep. It can be the environment that you create for your employees is a stepping stone for whatever else they're trying to do. In Absolutely. Life. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I always tell my chefs to, so I hope you guys leave here either starting a business or, um, you know, you become, a, a have a, a really good, uh, title at another restaurant. You know, I just don't want you to leave here going on to something that's the same that, you know, you're doing the same. I, when you leave here leveled up, you know, um, going into that, that upper management position. And that's I always want to make sure I'm giving you the tools, the resources, the opportunity to do things here. So that way you, you do get a really good, you know, position or you start your own business, you know, and yeah. hopefully I'm a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and you've, and you, you, you've definitely exhibited that. We were talking just before we hopped on here about, employees that you've had that you let them use your food truck so that they can go start their own thing. And you've, you've really exhibited, uh, I mean, back to that, that familial style, right. Of like anybody who's in that circle supporting each other, even if it means going outside of that. And I think that quality of attention and care to your employees ends up overflowing into the experience that the customers have when they walk in. Cause you can sense the energy in the place when, the employees genuinely feel cared for, for and sure. loved and yeah. taken care of. And we've even talked about, um, was it Shake Shack, the founder of Shake Shack? Shake Shack? And I had that conversation where he always said employees first. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of businesses, they have the mantra, like the customer's never wrong and all sorts of stuff. But his whole driving force, which when we spoke about it, it sounds like that's your driving force too, which is the employees come first. And if and you take do. care of the employees, then yeah. the employees will take care of the customers. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's always funny too. Um, you know, you, you do everything that you can and, um, hopefully somebody will, or it, most of them do, they, they, you know, they understand where you're trying to build and build the environment and they, they go with it and they love it. But, um, other people, you know, they come from, you know, my business coach said a lot of people come to you broken, you know, working from broken, uh, as far as working you know, at previous places where just they get shit on and they get treated like crap. So they come over here and, and you're completely different from other business owners. And they're like, all right, what, what the hell is he? What is he, Is this bullshit? I mean, what, what's going on here? This is, they're treating us too, too good. Right. Um, and they don't grasp the whole environment and they end up, you know, leaving but then realizing, no, oh, should I should have just stayed. Now I, I I understand what they're what they're trying to sell, right? Yeah. Um, so it's always interesting seeing that um, from different employees. Uh, but it's 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 what it's all about. Just oh, giving the tools and the resources, right? Yeah. So you step one is expose yourself to a lot of things so that you can Absolutely, pull a yes. lot of creative inspiration. Absolutely. Step two, validate things against the market yes. before you. Find yourself yep. in a, a financial pickle. Make yep. sure that you, you validate that it works. Step three, create a small environment that is close and intimate For and sure. that you can deliver on, on on a small but higher quality scale. Make sure the employees are taken care of. And Time, you can control it. And you can control yeah. it, right? So you're yeah. not you're not letting the, the horse run out yeah. from under you. You're, you're staying yeah. on it. You're really honing that experience Build and listening the foundation. closely. Building that foundation. Mm-hmm. And then step four. So let's say you're, you're, you're scaling up from there. Something that you mentioned previously was how, when you are creating dishes, you have a group of chefs and you all try each other's food and you try to experiment on things and learn together. What would creating that circle of friends or, or community, the close, close companionship with other chefs look like if you are, you know, starting to grow the business, you're really trying to hone your craft what would going out and meeting those people and, and building that community look like? Um, uh, well, one would be the background, and two, um, uh, what kind of value are they going to add with their background? Um, are they going to be, are they okay with, um, you know, constructive criticism? Are they okay with, you know, coming up with some good ideas and, and not being shy about it? Uh, I mean, there's different factors that go into building that, that good community. Um, but really, you know, do you trust me that I'm, you know, I'm going to put something out for you or, or, uh, create a dish that, 
Uh, it's going to sell. Do I trust you? You know, do we trust each other? Uh, obviously, trust is, is is a big thing too to building that that good core community. Um, but I, you know, I, I think trust and and having that that background of food uh, when coming up with all those dishes is key. Um, I know that you're going to, if I trust you, you're going to cook just as good as me, if not better, you know, um, or you're going to try really hard to cook as good as me. Um, and that's what it kind of just pulls down to when it building that, that core group to get, you know, that the next step up. So it sounds like you want to make sure that you have something to add to that community. Mm-hmm. Just add some value a little bit. doesn't have to be a lot. We can work on everything else, but you know, value can be, um, you know, you bring some good energy, um, you bring some ideas, even though they're bad. I mean, we, I've, I have bad ideas. I have good ideas. We all do. Right. Um, just any type of value that you can add. That's, that's all, that's all we need. So then assuming that you have that, that value, right? Mm-hmm. So let's, let's take you, for example, you really know your craft. We drop you in a city you've never been to before. You know you have your your skill set, your your tool belt. Yeah. Where do you go? What do you do to begin meeting with chefs and? Oh yeah. So that build. yeah. So first, I would pro- I would um, talk to a local chef network or group. Uh, normally, every city has their the chefs association. I start there. I would start with the uh, visitors bureau of that city. Um, I would go to any chef function that they would have and, and just start meeting people uh, local, really just the local groups, uh, a wedding group, a chef group, the visitors bureau, a chamber of commerce. And uh, that would probably be the top four to start there. Yeah. I mean, if I had, if I had the money, I would just go ahead and find a location and, and start looking for um, a restaurant spot and, and start, making friends through the chamber or any type of um, event. But if I didn't, then I would just start start there. Yeah, start making those, going to ne- networking events with the Chefs Association is, is big. Uh, how do you or who do you define as incredible? Oh, incredible. Um, my dad, my uncles. You know, the, and my grandpa, uh, they were all in their way, in their way, entrepreneurs. My dad worked really hard. My mom did too. They both worked super hard and they instilled that in me. You work hard, you know, you reap the benefits. Um, my dad and mom had these little odd businesses, right? From bringing, um, pottery from Mexico and selling it up in Chicago my grandpa had uh, a little bodega, a um, little grocery store in Mexico. My uncle, who was here helping me, uh, he had an electronic store, and then he sold car parts. He had a car parts store as well. And then my other uncle had, uh, he started with one dump truck, and now he's got like 20 bulldozers, 10 caterpillars. They do big excavation uh, jobs. They, they level land for malls and residential properties, communities, um, and then do a little, little bit of mining as well. Um, so I, I, I think they, they would probably be the people that inspire me. And at wh- where I am now, I look back, and they're the ones who kind of opened up the door to wanting to be my own boss, you know? Um, you don't think about those things until you're in that, yeah. that position. Like, oh shit, I go back and God, I mean, I remember being in my uncle's dump truck and playing in it. And, you know, that was that one shitty ass dump truck that they <laughs> used to haul dirt back and forth. And, you know, I, I, I remember we would just go into my uncle's shop and, and just wait there and play and, and wait till he closed the shop so we can go have dinner. And, um, you know, it, it, and I've never felt like I had a, um, like we were waiting on them because they can do whatever they wanted. You know, they were all business owners. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. 
So you they, they created that environment they for did. you where you could be curious towards yeah. what, what does owning your business look like or what does it look like to create an environment for yourself where you do have that freedom and mm-hmm. flexibility to go do whatever you want when yeah. you want. It's like it, it, they they keep all the, they throw all these ideas. You you see all this ingrained in, in into your I guess your um, your I wouldn't say subconscious, but it, it's it's back there, you, not realizing that they're the ones who were uh, planting all those seeds all throughout, you know. Um, even even my grandma, um, what we do now is about community and bringing people together. She did that her whole life with us, you know, but it, she was planting that seed to get me ready to, you know, for this point that you don't realize until you actually dive into what, what has made you successful, uh, you know, to this point, and you start pinpointing all those things. You go, you trace it back all the way to your childhood, and it's those things that they started planting in you. It's crazy. That is crazy. It is nuts. So it's like it, yeah. it, it's, it's 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 tools you're acquiring on your tool belt as yeah. you go through life Absolutely. that you don't realize you have until you want to start your own venture or do your own thing, and you look around and realize nobody else has those tools yeah. <laughs> that you have. That's right. Yeah, it, it just goes back to when you were a kid, and they're just so you know, like for us, it was normal. It was normal life, and just going about our business and working hard and trying to, you know, uncles trying to start their businesses, and but we never thought of it. We just it was normal life for us. Yeah, it was just yeah normal life. These expertises that you're developing and things that you've leaned hard into and actually sure. observed and noticed, which is why it's so interesting. The idea of if you don't know what you want to do in life, just look, look back, back on your experiences, Absolutely. look down at your tool belt and say, OK, what tools came supernaturally to me that Absolutely. didn't come naturally to other people? What can I lean hard into? Yeah, because you'll yeah. often find, too, the tools that you develop are things that you didn't even realize may become really naturally to you Mm -hmm. or things that you're really interested in. And if you want to be a peak performer in anything, it needs to be in something that you are genuinely interested in because if you're just grinding through the motions, you're going to get smoked by the person who's genuinely interested in that thing because they have way more to give into it. They do. Yeah. You got to genuinely be interested in, in what you're doing. Yeah don't just start it because somebody else is doing it. You can, Oh, I can do that too. I'm like, no, it's not about that. You know, it's, it's, what are you passionate about? You know, if you're not passionate about this and, you know, trace back what you have been passionate, even when you're in high school, you can figure out something you were passionate about in high school. Yeah. You know, it's just, we get so, uh, worn down with the, you know, day to day grind. we we forget what our upbringing is and, and what we've, you know, encountered, since we were small that like you can pull you can pull from 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 that yeah yeah absolutely so on where can people find you where can people find magdalena's where can people get on the the mailing list yeah. the email list go to magdalena's tx.com um they can find uh us here at 502 grand in Fort worth um you make reservations for supper club on their website uh, if you become an email subscriber you'll get the email with the uh, the reservation link and the menu Our we have a food truck Instagram that goes a uh, food truck goes everywhere. We're going to be in downtown uh, Fort Worth tomorrow, but it goes everywhere, everywhere. Um, if you just follow us, we'll post up the other uh, schedule on there. Let's see. And we're preferred vendor at pretty much every venue in DFW. So if anybody's looking to get married, have a corporate event, we're there. Awesome. Juan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, he too. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Let's do it again. We'll do it again. (laughs) Absolutely.